Can AI write a beer recipe? That's the question in today's video. Now, AI has been around for a long time. I mean, we see it almost every day. One of the things that has recently kind of ramped up the awareness of AI is that there's been a lot of image creators that are creating images out of nothing, basically just giving it some descriptive words and it's creating an image. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ones that come to mind. Also, there's some AI that's been doing, you know, other things with regard to uh, knowledge bases and stuff like that. The one that I am looking at today in this video is OpenAI. They have a program called ChatGPT. You may have seen it. A lot of people are using it out there right now to create websites, um, to, you know, write code, a bunch of different things like that. I saw, I've been seeing these videos, you know, in my feed over and over and over again. And it got me thinking, well, I wonder if this AI could write a beer recipe. So what I did was I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to ask it to write a beer recipe. And I started doing this about a month ago, just to let you know. And it was kind of interesting. It's uh, when I first did it, it spit out some information and none of it was exactly correct. But as I've continued to interact with it and ask it questions over time, I feel like it's learned a little bit more as it's gone along. Now, you know, I did a specific set of requests for this particular video just to see where it was at. Now, AI is pretty interesting where it will only, it's only going to give you as specific uh, response as this, as specific as your question is. So I started out with just a simple, quick, you know, create a hazy IPA recipe and it started spitting out ingredients, you know, a bunch of different things that you normally see in those hazy IPA recipes, you know, wheat malt, flaked oats, all that kind of stuff. And then for the hops, the initial recipe was pretty overboard on hops, in my opinion. And over time using the chat GPT system, I've noticed that it's kind of switched around with different hops and stuff like that. For this particular today, it seemed it was fixated on Citra and Mosaic. And that was pretty much the only thing that it was putting in the recipe as I was working through it. So got the first results back, put it into Brewfather. It was way off. I mean, it completely pegged the style guidelines for a hazy IPA. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to, and, and the one thing about chat GPT is it will remember what you asked it before. So like, if I ask it a question, I can ask it a question about its answer for that previous question. So, you know, it, it has a, it has um, a memory, I guess, if you will, where it will take into consideration the previous things that you've asked it to do. So once it spit out the results and everything was way out of whack, I said, okay, you know, refine this recipe to be, you know, I, th I think I said, uh, starting gravity, or original gravity of 1065 and a IBU of 45. So asked it to generate that it started generating the code. And then this thing is really, really being used right now. So sometimes it will crash. So in the middle of that, it crashed. Uh, it was in the process of adjusting the grains as well as the hops in that revision of the recipe. So I went ahead and, you know, I since thank goodness I was recording it because once it crashes, it, <laughs> it disappears from the screen. So I recorded that iteration of the recipe was still quite a ways off on the gravity, still way out on the, on the, the uh, IBUs. So I just asked it just to basically rerun that question that I had before. So it spit out again, which was interesting. Uh, even though it crashed, it reduced the amount of grain again. So it went from like 14 pounds of grain to 12 pounds of grain to 10 pounds of grain. And the interesting thing that I noticed, it's kept just cutting the hops, the hop additions in half. So I don't know that it's really able to tell, you know, like if I, I haven't ever asked it to do a first word hop or something like that, but I just started, you know, kept asking it to reduce, you know, Hey, your this recipe is still over the guidelines, reduce it some more. So every time that I asked it, it seemed like it's method for solving the issue of the IBUs was cutting it in half. So. We finally got down to a pretty close guy within guidelines recipe. It did remove some of the adjunct grains that it had in there because of the, the gravity issue. Got pretty close to what I asked it to as far as the gravity goes. But then because it kept cutting the, the hops in half and half and half as it went along, the hops wound up being reduced so much that I thought we were right there in the 45 IBU range. But I realized when I was entering the revision into Brewfather, that I uh, forgot to make one of the revisions. So once I got everything to match what chat GPT's recipe had showed, 
it was actually down to like 33 IBUs and there were like, there's virtually like no hops in there, which, you know, as we know, this, you know, is not going to make a great hazy IPA. Probably be color wise would be fine. Taste aroma would be okay. But it had like a very low dry hop addition. Now I could have asked it to go back, which was, this is the interesting part. I could have asked it to go back and add the dry hop from the initial. So because I was so broad with my request for the software, I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to try to do a little bit more refined request. So what I did was I thought, well, let's go ahead and do like an American Amber Ale. So I went out to the BJCP style guidelines. I pulled all of the information off of there for, you know, all the guidelines that a BJCP judge would be looking for in that beer. Asked it to create an Amber Ale recipe based off of the following characteristics and put, I just copied and pasted everything from there into it. What I didn't realize was that I didn't give it any kind of uh, ABV, IBU, you know, OG, FG measurements or anything like that. So let it spit it out, put that into Brewfather. We were way out again. Well, the, the, the alcohol percentage or the OG was okay, but it wasn't, it was right at the edge of the style guidelines. The hops were quite a ways out and it also picked some really interesting, like I said earlier, it was liking Citra and Mosaic. So in this recipe, it, it added Centennial, but it added a bunch of hops that you normally wouldn't see in a brown ale. So it's kind of interesting to see that it was, uh, it was fixated on those hops for some reason. I'm, I'm guessing that it, has when it went out and researched its data set now they they do allow it they they allow the software to research whatever i don't know what the parameters were but it goes out and crawls the web and finds as much information as they let it go find um and they stopped doing that in 2021 so basically they closed the data set as of 2021 and it hasn't picked up anything new but i'm assuming that since it found so many recipes with citra and mosaic and it throughout the recipes that it researched or the data that it pulled in it probably thinks that those are very popular hops and that that's why it's putting them in the recipe. So um, I asked it to make the recipe. It made the recipe. Everything was a little bit out of guidelines. And then I went back and I actually asked it to, you know, make it within the guidelines. I gave it some more parameters for OG, ABV, IBU and all that stuff. Um, it went back and it rec recalculated the recipe. There again, it started cutting all everything in half again. And we got pretty much down into a, you know, somewhat, somewhat uh, within style guideline recipe, but I don't know that the hops that it had in there for aroma and flavor everything would be, would be that great in a brown. They might be good. I don't know. I've got, I, have, I don't know if I would brew the beer quite honestly. Um, one thing that I did do in the past, I didn't do it for this particular video because I didn't want to take a whole bunch of time, but I did play around with uh, creating like a hazy IPA or different other different styles. And then I would ask it to exchange the hops in the recipe for New Zealand hops or African hops or whatever. And it did a pretty good job of, you know, substituting the hops that come from those regions in place of some of the American hops. So it was really interesting from that aspect of it. And, uh, you know, the brown ale did wind up getting within style guidelines, like I said, but it was, it's one of those things where, you know, I don't know that I would brew the beer based off of that. I don't think that the... AI is quite where it should be yet. And, you know, it was kind of funny. I was doing the, I was thinking about doing this video and I, I sent David Heath a, a, a message on Facebook messenger about it. <laughs> David's really good at writing recipes and doing research and, you know, coming up with good recipes and stuff. And, and he was like, he was like appalled and, and <laughs> he was like, Oh, good Lord. You're not going to do that. Are you? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I am going to, I am going to do that. Uh, also, incidentally, um, someone has brewed a, recipe from an AI generated recipe or brewed a beer from an AI generated recipe. Marshall and Martin Keene from Brewlosophy, uh, Brewlosophy and Homebrew Challenge have actually joined up and they're starting to put content on the Brewlosophy page. Martin's going to be doing a bunch of the tri triangle contests and everything. One of their recent trailers did hint at the fact that they were going to be brewing a beer that was generated from an AI for the recipe. So that'll be really interesting to see. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see me try to get it to spit out a recipe where we could actually try to brew it and see how it turns out. That would be really interesting. Now, the other thing I've done, you know, cause I like cooking and everything, just for, just for the fun of it, I asked it to generate a recipe based off of ingredients. So like I just put like chicken and rice and black beans and salsa. And so, I mean, this, this would almost be like a, you know, a, a dorm, dorm room, uh, you know, savior for looking in your pantry and seeing what you've got. You know, the, we got noodles, we got this, we got that. What can we make, you know, instead of throwing something together that, you know, you, that you can't quite think of how to create. 
I threw those ingredients in there to ask it what it would come up with. And it came up with like a chicken and rice casserole with using all the ingredients that I had. I've done it in the past as well. And it actually, it spit out other ingredients and like more spices and everything, things that I didn't even tell it to specify in the recipe. So um, it is, uh, I think it's openai.com. I'll leave a link down below. You do have to like sign up for a, for a, uh, an account, but I mean, I've not been spammed or anything like that from it. So, I mean, it's just, I think they just want people to, to, to verify that they're not a bot or whatever. So I, you know, I've, I've, you have to sign up for it. You have to give it like a telephone number and stuff like that, but I'll leave a link down below. Let me know if you go out and check it out, try it out, see what you think. I mean, it's one of, one of those fun things I, I've recently toyed with. I posted a picture on Instagram with a uh, AI image generator and told it to create a, a can of hazy IPA. It made a weird image. Of course, the lettering on it was all screwed up. But um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of those things where it, it's kind of a cool technology. I wanted to try to apply it to beer brewing. So let me know what you think of the video down below. Certainly do appreciate all the support. It's good to be back and uh, we'll see you on the next video.